Alright fellas. I gotta admit. I've got a gambling problem. My favorite gambling sites are AliExpress and Wish.com. Every time I go on Wish.com or AliExpress, next day I end up with maxed out credit card and a bunch of stuff that comes in the mail. This is one of those things that came in the mail out of a night of gambling on AliExpress. Well, let's take a look. Have I lost or have I won? This unit being Android based, it is more versatile than Swiss Army Spork. And I'm gonna try to go over all the features that it has, but it's probably gonna miss some of it. And uh, I'll try to make uh, good editing of all the things listed right here. Hopefully I'll do proper editing, hopefully things that I'm gonna fit are gonna fit on the screen. Features like radio, music player, navigation system, backup camera, CarPlay, Android Auto, video player, intranet, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, climate control. There is a lot of things to talk about. I will try to make it into a coherent order. First, the radio. In case you forgot that we are modern day slaves and our society runs on consumerism, this is a good place to get yourself that reminder. Here you can select from your favorite advertisement uh, radio stations and uh, hear about the things that you should be buying and things that you probably don't need. Sometimes they also talk about traffic and the weather. The radio works pretty good. It has uh, a lot of places where you can save uh, your uh, favorite advertisement stations. Uh, so you can scroll through them uh, with ease in case you don't fancy one advertisement you can switch to the next. What I do like about this is that uh, this button, I mean this knob, I originally I thought that this knob would be tuned as in it would scroll through the frequencies, uh, but no, uh, this knob scrolls through your presets. So if you have uh, saved your presets here, this knob will scroll through them. And saving presets, it's uh, pretty easy. First, uh, I guess you just find the station that you want. And let's say you like this children's station here. You can just hold the button, placeholder for the preset, and there it is. It says child right there. Uh, also, what is nice is that it uh, will display the name of the songs playing on stations that actually broadcast and that kind of stuff. So if you listen to some station, well, it will say things like this station plays 90s. Uh, it would also sometimes will show uh, name of the artist and name of the song that is playing. And uh, I believe that only shows up if uh, you have chose the USA setting here. I think if you chose something else, it will not show up because I remember that by default it selected something else. After I selected USA, it started showing things up like that. Uh, also, I believe also once you switch from different areas here, you will lose uh, all your advertisement radio stations presets. So make sure to get this selected first before you do your preset saves. And uh, I don't know what is this AM FM sense. I uh, haven't messed around with it enough to understand, so I don't really know what it is. This button here, also not really sure. Uh, this one is supposed to turn on stereo. Not sure how that works. This one also don't really know. Uh, yeah, sorry, not very helpful here, uh, but as a radio, it does its job. It does try to program people for the consumerism and it, it works. It That's what it does. So if you're not into advertisements and you prefer to listen to music instead, there is a music player it, right here on uh, home screen. So you can just tap that and you can start playing music from here. Uh, and then uh, when you go back to home screen, it's still there. And from here you can uh, switch uh, Switch tracks from right here. You can also pause music from right here also. That works quite uh, seamlessly. You can also use this knob here to scroll through tracks too, which is, I think is pretty good. That's a smart function to have. It doesn't scroll through the sun, it actually skips to the next sun, which is probably the best thing you can have for this knob. So it's uh, easy to scroll through tracks as you're driving, in case you have a steering wheel like mine, which doesn't have next or previous buttons. It's very easy to reach over and scroll to the next one. App for itself also, I think, looks very good. Uh, it uh, matches with your advertisement app, 
uh, so it has the same thing going i like that consistency there what you have here also you can make your songs be played in random uh, for element of surprise in case you're tired of the same order uh, you can also do some equalizer here i'm relatively a tone deaf person so i don't know how well this works i never messed with these kind of things i have no idea how well the quality of the sound coming out of this head unit is I don't even have the premium subwoofers. I have just regular bass uh, um, speakers, which are I hear supposed to be crap, but I can't tell the difference. So maybe somebody knowledgeable would know more about this, but I don't. Uh, it also has the speaker control, so you can choose uh, which speakers are playing. And um, if you see an installation video, all of this has been pre-wired, and I just it's just a plug-in harness. And so I didn't have to find which speakers, which one I was wiring it. I just plugged it in and the harness is pre-wired correctly. I've tested it out. So if you choose uh, whichever speaker, that's the speaker that will be playing. Um, in case people in the back don't really like your tunes and they just want you to shut up, you can just play music in the front. Or if people in the back are too loud and you want to drown them out, you can switch the music to the back. Next this feature is supposed to be some kind of uh, key feature for this uh, head unit it's on the aliexpress website and uh, it's supposed to delay the sound from each speaker as it reaches your ears and it's supposed to sound more equal and you feel like all your sounds are working properly as you can see here surround has been closed <laughs> uh, what, what they're actually trying to say is that surround has been turned off if you push this button it turns it on uh, can you hear the difference well yes even a tone deaf person like me notices there's some difference in the sound what kind of difference i can't tell is it actually better i also can't tell and from what the website said is that this default setting is made for the best audio experience for the driver well i'm not the only person in the car sometimes maybe i want everyone else to hear the music equally not have only one person having better quality of sound and other people possibly hearing garbage so if you turn it off it's supposed to do it everything equally or if you want to mess with it too you can actually mess with all the settings here and i don't know make something your own then there is this thing. I also have not messed with this as well. Um, not think it might be better for somebody who actually has subwoofers. I don't really have anything, so have not messed with it. So a few things that I've noticed uh, an issue with this uh, unit is that when I try to play music from a USB, like I have plugged in right here, and I have a lot of files in one USB uh, folder, uh, sometimes this player will crash. So if you wanna play a lot of files, I suggest you copy them onto the internal memory and uh, play it from there. But if there's only like, I don't know, maybe less than 50 sound tracks in one folder on the USB, I think it might work. Um, but yes, it can play music from USB and can play music from the internal memory. And if you don't like to copy files or not technologically inclined uh, cyber runner computer person, you can always opt out for using Bluetooth. Uh, this also works quite flawlessly. Uh, you just uh, play music on your phone and you can connect it um, by Bluetooth. And from here, you can basically play whatever plays on your phone. And you do have the function to be able to scroll through tracks or um, pause your music, things like that. Um, also works with audiobooks quite well. I uh, used it with uh, Audible and uh, have had no issues. Um, instead of skipping tracks, this knob actually fast forwards or rewinds um, whatever has been read and uh, it's, uh, it's perfect. That's exactly what I wanted. That would completely suck if this knob was like skipping chapters or if these buttons were skipping chapters because then then I'll be like probably so frustrated I would punch this unit and then we'll opt out for something different uh, but it works quite well uh, one thing that doesn't work 
super well is that there is no feedback that you can get from pressing this uh, buttons on the screen so when you actually there is feedback is just not that noticeable when you're driving it okay i guess you can see that when you hit the button it actually glows a little bit but it's difficult to see and the area that you need to press is actually quite small i don't know why did they make it well maybe it's fine uh just sometimes i hit play and feels like it doesn't play and i'm not sure if i hit play or not um it would be nice if the buttons were maybe a little bit bigger or if there was a little bit more feedback so you actually know if you press the button or not yes you can have your contacts in here as well so you can scroll through those and call them you have your call history so you can see the person uh, you were talking to last and you can call them back uh, you can dial your phone numbers from here if you were like born in 19 90s and you remember how to remember numbers and you know them off your top of your head this is i guess for you for everyone else i would just go to my contacts or a history this not really sure what it means and here is where you can configure your bluetooth so you can change your name uh the device how it shows up when you try to connect to it uh change your parent password and uh like things like auto answer and this is a Bluetooth reset. This is basically resets all your settings. So maybe you should avoid pressing that button. Next is the video player. This is probably one of my favorite features on this unit uh, because you can watch anime wherever you are. If you came to pick up your date and she decided to not show up last minute, well, you can just sit there and watch anime and not even care that you got stood out on a date and ghosted. Or if you're a middle-aged man and you worked your ass off all day and you came home and then you just think about your nagging wife and annoying kids at home and you just like don't want to see them you could just stay in a car and watch whatever you want to watch i mean the possibilities are endless just kidding i think kids are great and they're our future but i prefer cats however there are some improvements that can be done to this player um for example, this is not the best player for watching anime, as uh, there are no subtitles for people who don't speak Japanese. You know, it's going to be quite difficult and distracting to drive and read subtitles. Well, actually, no, that doesn't make sense. If Even if you had subtitles, you probably shouldn't be reading them while driving. Anywho, there are no subtitles. Uh, I don't know if it's possible to actually enable them maybe there are subtitles options somehow um, but i couldn't find it there is an option to do uh, picture in picture so that's not bad uh, apparently it also changes sizes too um, and uh, there is an option to scroll uh, through your anime list there right there um, however there are no gestures uh, if you've used vlc player VLC player has option to uh, scroll volume up, volume down. I think there's even options to do the to um, change the brightness, pause, things like that. Uh, there's nothing like that here. You just have to press the buttons. However, the buttons are quite big and nice, so they are bigger than what you get on the VLC player. So that is uh, that is a plus in my opinion. But this being an Android unit, I mean, there's nothing really that stops you from just downloading a VLC player. There you go. You can have the same anime playing on a VLC player. Uh, and uh, VLC player does have a uh, uh, bunch of uh, options here as well. And uh, it's, uh, it does show up with subtitles, which is uh, pretty awesome. However... Uh, Oh yeah, and it does have gestures, which is also fantastic. Uh, however, one thing that I don't like about VLC player is that uh, it goes full screen mode and your climbing control options disappear like that. Uh, maybe it's actually a good thing if you just like want to sit in your car and watch anime while you ignore your family. You, maybe you don't want to see your climbing control. But if you're kind of like watching anime and driving at the same time, 
and also you want to change your climate control, then maybe you should use the video player that is uh, preloaded into this unit. And since we are on the topic of uh, watching videos, you might be thinking, what about Netflix? Can I Netflix and chill in my car? Uh, yes, but you can't download the Netflix app. <laughs> Netflix app is uh, not supported for this device. Not really sure why. Uh, so you're just going to have to log in on a web browser for that. All right, this next feature is probably one of the most essential features, and that's navigation GPS. What if you need coffee right away and you just need coffee right now? You can just hit coffee and there it finds you a bunch of coffee shops nearby. And uh, or what if you need some ice cream? You can just type in ice cream and it finds you a bunch of ice cream places right away too. And you can satisfy your ice cream urge right then and right there. And well, you could also need gas and anything else. Uh, but the point is that this navigation system works without connecting to Apple CarPlay, without Android Auto, without data, without nothing. You just have to download the maps at one point of time. And once you have the maps downloaded, it will work completely offline. You don't even need to be connected to Wi-Fi for this to work. So uh, in case you didn't know how to download maps, you can just uh, look for things like, let's do, Look for the things like Vancouver and uh, over here it says download and you can see the size of the area you want to download and uh, you just hit download. You can actually do quite a big bigger area. Uh, yeah. So and um, for this of course you need data so you could you know possibly stop by Starbucks park in front of uh, McDonald's or Tim Hortons uh, and uh, mooch the data from there if you don't have enough uh, uh, cell phone data. Of course, in an offline mode, you're not going to be able to see the live traffic and the best route and things like that, or if the store is closing by the time you arrive in case your map has not been updated. But still, I prefer it this way. I don't want to have to rely on having a data connection or rely on always connecting to Android Auto or CarPlay. I'd rather have my car be in a standalone unit that is able to do its own things. So like even if I lend the key to somebody else uh, who needs to borrow the car, they're able to come in here and the GPS is working as normal. And uh, I've tried a couple of other apps. I've tried uh, Cigic and uh, I have uh, Cigic installed. I've also tried uh, Maps.me. Uh, Maps.me is not bad, but it's not so good at searching for points of interest. As I showed, I have a coffee addiction, and uh, when I hit coffee, Maps.me doesn't do so well. Or when I search for something else, and I just type in the name of a place, it's not always able to find it, while uh, Google Maps works, uh, well, works the best out of everything that I've tried. And let's move on to the climate control app. So uh, the climate control also only comes on when the car actually is in the run position. So you can turn the key to the run position. Uh, you can see the stuff light up. The climate control has been turned on. Uh, you have a uh, few buttons on the bottom here. And I think they did quite well of selecting uh, this uh, buttons to put here, except for one thing, they don't have an on-off button. <laughs> they have an auto button, which does nothing. Probably in half of Mustangs, this button uh, doesn't really go anywhere. Uh, I don't know how many Mustangs out there have a temperature sensor for the climate control, uh, but uh, I think a lot of them don't. At least I like to think so because I don't have it. And uh, so yeah, this button does nothing. Then. Um, the way you turn off the climate control is you can hit this button right there. It will open up full climate control app. And from here, you can turn it off. Now, to turn it on, what you can do is you can hit the mode button. Turning on fan speed, it's not gonna 
it's going to change the fan speed that it will be at once you actually turn it on but until you turn it on it does nothing uh, okay actually heating ac button also turns it on heating mode button will also turn it on and mode is selecting uh, where it's going to point and auto as I explained does nothing <laughs> and this uh, front with the front defroster or not def defogger so it turns on the uh, re redirects all the air to the front windshield so it gets defogged the fastest as you may have noticed the bottom climate control options are always there uh, well not much of it it just basically shows you the fan speed shows AC and a temperature those things don't go away pretty much anytime unless you are in reverse gear or you are in VLC player in uh, full screen mode. Uh, so that is uh, quite nice because you could be in a navigation app and you still have ability to change your climate control. So and this thing pops up here. As far as I know, it does not. Uh, it's <laughs> as far as I know, whatever this thing pops up, it's uh, not meant for control. It's more like a status display. So you're not able to change anything from here. It just shows you uh, what's your climate controls doing. The things that I use the most for climate control are usually the the fan speed, of course. Oh god, yeah. There's another thing that happens <laughs> if you push up and down at the same time. It actually turns on the radio. <laughs> uh, I'm not sure if it was design intent. I think it's just how the CAN bus works. Uh, so I don't think it's a feature. It's more like just a thing that happens. So how I use climate control, usually when I'm driving, I would uh, sometimes adjust the temperature. Rarely I would adjust temperature. I usually just leave it at 23 or something. Uh, 23 degrees really does not mean nothing as a number. It's more like a setting on a blend door. As I said, this car doesn't have a sensor. So 23 doesn't really mean anything. It's just a setting for the how much it's going to mix hot air with cold air and what it's going to spew out of the vents. And uh, so sometimes I adjust this, sometimes I adjust the, uh, the fan speed, sometimes I want to defog my windows. So that's all fantastic. Well, actually in the summer, I also sometimes turn on AC. That is awesome. So this is barely sufficient. Uh, and uh, because it's so difficult to turn off the climate control, Actually, most of the time I don't turn it off. <laughs> I just leave it on the minimum fan setting and I always drive like this. It's not that audible. I'm okay with it just having slight white noise from the fans and everything and I'm okay with that. In the summer, sometimes I do want to turn on the recirculating air. It, the AC just works a lot better when you're recirculating air and for that I would have to go into this app. Also, you may have noticed that there's way more things on this screen than the car can actually do. You can see that there is a seat warmer, there is also a seat heater, and there is a rear air, which is uh, non-existent in this car. Uh, you can also see that there is... Yeah, you can't turn... Not, nothing you can do here. You can also see there, it shows like a dual climate control. There is no such thing as a dual climate control in this... Well, I mean, not in my car. I guess some people have it. Uh, but yes, in my case, it's the uh, same thing. So uh, this is uh, basically what you get from this. All right, it's uh, kind of getting dark. I think I will uh, drive home and uh, continue this from a parking lot. And the next essential feature is the backup camera. And I know you might say, haha, backup camera is not an essential feature. Real men don't need no backup camera to back up their car. Well, real men have also sent their Mustangs into crowds of people. You know why that is? Because they can't see anything out of this windshield. The visibility out of this car is so poor. They just couldn't see the crowds of people. They couldn't see where they're driving. And accidents happened. And this is looking forward. I'm not even talking about looking back. I mean, you can hide entire football field full of basketball players back there and not notice them while you're backing up and running them all over so that's why this is why backup cameras save lives 
I have not ran over a single person since I've installed this backup camera. This is what it looks like. This is a HD camera that is wired up over a single RCA cable is what transmits this signal. And I must say it is actually good. It's definitely better than just uh, anything standard definition. So this is definitely better than what is normal. I think it's somehow they do in some kind of digital signal over a single RCA cable. That's why the definition is actually better than I had expected. And uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's not a gimmick. It actually works. And uh, you can see that, uh, see those guidelines and you can see that uh, floor. Can you, and it seems like I have my guidelines very well lined up with how the horizon line works. Well, that's not by accident. That's because they actually give you an option to adjust your guidelines. So there's line settings here. You can change the width. You can change the camera height, angle, view angle, horizon. So all of those things, you mess with those things and you can line up your lines to look however you want them to look. So in my case, those yellow lines, that's pretty much limits where my car can fit. If I have things crossing those yellow lines, that means my car is not gonna fit in there. So yes, it's nice that they give you an option to adjust those lines. At first I was confused. I didn't know if there's a way to even turn it off, but no, they give you everything. Uh, I don't know about this thing down here. I think this is for proximity sensors. I don't have any. Uh, I don't know if your car came with proximity sensors. They might be transmitting that data over the CAN bus and might work automatically. The only negative thing I can say about the backup camera is that you actually need to wait for the head unit to boot up before you can use it. So if you had turned off your car completely and then you, tr you just got up in the morning and gonna drive your car to work and you put it in reverse gear, as you can see, the screen has not booted up so it doesn't show you anything on the screen. So I can actually start backing up right now and I still blind. I know I can use a back mirror, but as I said, I'm not that. <laughs> so yeah, as you seen, it takes a while for it to boot up before you're able to use a backup camera. I've um, had this uh, units before where they didn't have a digital camera and I think those work nearly instantly even if the unit has not booted up and it takes like maybe one or one, one, two seconds and it's still able to see your backup camera view even when the unit's not fully booted up but I think this one cannot do that because the signal that is sent is actually digital so that's why I think it takes longer. Next is the feature that would be probably the most anticipated feature for this head unit and that's Apple CarPlay. Unfortunately I don't have an Apple phone, I have an Android phone because I'm poor, so I can't show you Apple CarPlay, but I can't show you Android Auto. This is what it looks like. Uh, you have this uh, app on the screen, CarLink, you uh, connect your Android with a uh, USB cable. I have the USB cable in my glove box right here. Um, the head unit comes with two USB ports. Uh, I think it should work in either one of them. I plug it into one of them and it works no problem. Uh, for Apple CarPlay, it would, it says it will work wirelessly. Uh, so you just need to connect with Bluetooth and I think it will work, it says right there. Um, wired Android Auto wireless CarPlay. So for Apple users, you might be able to get better experience. Um, Android Auto. It works uh, as uh, well as Android Hour works. There it is. It just plugs it in and it gets put it up. Um, the good, if you never used uh, Android Auto, basically it uh, uses everything from your phone. You can use your data, your contacts, you can use app that's installed on your phone uh, to do it from here. You can, you know, check your Facebook messages, you can do WhatsApp. You can also talk to Google 
uh, which is probably uh, one of the better features of the Android Auto. Doing voice commands like saying, hey Google, get me to Superstore or hey Google, get me to gas station, something like that. I usually don't communicate with Google. I got Alexa at home and I think she doesn't like it when I talk to Google. Alexa, play Edge Runners from Netflix. You forgot to say please. Son of a j- uh, And that's pretty much the only feature that I think that is good about Android Auto. I don't know, I haven't used Android Auto so much, uh, but besides talking to Google, I think it's just an inferior experience. As you can see, the screen is a lot smaller, the resolution is a lot smaller, you don't get all of your apps working properly, uh, it's um, just not that good. I've used uh, CarPlay and I think it's a little bit better uh, than Google, although I haven't tried talking with Siri. Uh, what I like about uh, CarPlay is that you can actually use your phone together with the unit and you can tell, uh, you can choose uh, where you want to drive on your phone or if you have a, like I don't know, somebody sitting in the next seat and they choose a uh, destination on the phone and it will just show up on the screen and your navigation will sh show up, will transfer to the screen, will show you where to drive. Uh, it's not possible as far as I can tell with Android Auto. I mean, I haven't messed around with it that much, but from what it looks like, once you have this thing connected, you can't do anything on your phone anymore. Everything is pretty much down through here. The only thing you get from Android Auto that is good is talking to Google. This unit also comes with an app that might be a little bit better than uh, traditional Android Auto, and that is this uh, Easy Connect thing. So when you hit Easy Connect, it's gonna tell you to install a CarLink app on your phone. And uh, yeah, it looks like CarBit Link app. You just install that app and this allows you to do this. Uh, well, first of all, it looks a lot better because it actually fills up the whole screen. Yeah, for the screen resolution, I don't know, still looks too crowded in for my preference. However, uh, what you can do here that is better than uh, Android Auto is that you can do screen mirroring. So you can open the app and you can do screen mirroring and then it will show what you have on your phone. And uh, the resolution of course gets messed up again. You don't use the whole screen, but this way basically you're able to do whatever you're able to do on your phone. You can do on the unit right here. It'll just shows up on a screen that is a little bit bigger <laughs> than my phone in my case in your case if your cell phone bigger than this it might be the same thing as working with your phone except it is mounted on your screen yeah not to think about it maybe this is not such a great thing all right and that pretty much concludes all the major features there are some features that i haven't shown because i don't have them like the dash cam feature I think you can buy a USB camera to plug it into here and you can have uh, this uh, unit basically recording uh, your dash cam stuff for my understanding but I don't have it so I can't comment on it. The, I think there is also a feature for the 360 parking where it's gonna show you 360 view of your car when you're trying to park but also don't have that stuff. Okay, one more feature that is uh, noteworthy is the split screen. This is actually kind of a cool feature at first. Uh, you could turn on your GPS map on one screen. And then you can also turn on, let's say, advertisement station on your other screen. And from here you can choose uh, this button up there. And you can see that split screen uh, icon right there. So first one will be on top, second will be on the bottom. So let's do maps on top and let's do radio on the bottom. And there it is. Uh, at first I thought this is really, really cool uh, because I can choose, click on my stations and I can see my screen at the same time. But later, as I have discovered, this uh, tune button does the same thing. Actually, I don't need to have to have split screen feature. You can also do the same thing for the Bluetooth. And also sometimes split screen picture glitches out and things like this happened.
let's do Bluetooth. Yeah, no, just yeah, Bluetooth, and let's see if we can do maps on top, Bluetooth on the bottom. Yeah, something like that. If uh, poorly translated English bothers you, you might want to end this video now. Unless, unless you want to know the admin password for this, then you're going to have to stick around. So let's get into it. So first settings is the Wi-Fi. This is useful uh, for getting data to your head unit from cell phone. That's what I usually do. I usually just share data when I need to to this unit so I'm able to download apps when I need to. Uh, data usage is just shows you uh, how much uh, data you used, which has been leached from your cell phone or from the McDonald's or Starbucks, if you park in front of Starbucks, that might be actually better. Starbucks is my experience better than McDonald's. Uh, SIM information, this is uh, your UMIDs. If you are going to use SIM cards, I believe there's actually two SIM card slots. I think in China, people really like SIM cards and they just put two SIM cards into everything. Uh, I don't want to use a single single SIM card. Uh, but if you do want to share your data with Xi Jinping and uh, Chinese government of China, uh, there is a SIM card slot where you can put a SIM card so you can have a direct connection to Chinese government at all times. Uh, next, you can do tethering. That's kind of cool. Okay, so if you are talking to Xi Jinping and you want Xi Jinping also to have connection to your cell phone as well, you can tether him to that. Okay, I hope Chinese viewers are not offended. I do respect Xi Jinping and the Chinese government. I do want to get more of this AliExpress head units. So please don't put me on a ban list over there. All right, so the next button down here, you can uh, change the display settings. Actually, I haven't changed this in a while, so I'm not sure what it does. Oh, cool, you can do your background. You can do auto back screen. Oh, okay. Yeah, this is, I guess, will turn off your screen. If you don't touch it for a while, which doesn't make sense for um, head unit in the car, but would make sense for other Android devices. So it, that's why it says never, because it probably should never turn off the screen uh, and it should always stay on this, uh, should always lit. Uh, display net switch. Oh, it displays that number. I don't even know what that number is. I think it might be related to something about network or Wi Fi or Bluetooth, stuff like that. Then you have sound. Uh, so this enables it so that anytime you touch the screen, it will have an audible sound. Okay, there you go. Uh, yeah, uh, might be useful for some people. Loud, just turns uh, the bass up on your speakers or something like that. Um, amp on off, not sure what it does because I don't have an amp and I don't have anything wired to an amp. Uh, power conditioning is um, like a gain. So if you turn this down, your maximum volume on the speaker is gonna be lower. And you might be wondering, why would anybody want maximum volume to be limited by this? Well, that could be the case if you have stock speakers. <laughs> and your stock speakers cannot take all the power that this unit can provide and actually might blow your speakers. In that case, you could lower your conditioning. I actually never tried to turn the volume all the way up. But if I did turn all the volume up and if my speakers did blow, I think I'll just go get new speakers. So at this point, I left it at maximum volume because I do have stock speakers and I don't care if they blow. Um, subwoofer, I don't know. I have a mess with it because I don't have it. Uh, equalizer, I think I already showed before. And speed compensation volume is actually a pretty cool feature. Uh, is uh, often available on the cars from factory. Is uh, when you get up to higher speed, the speed compensation feature will make the volume go higher. Um, and it has a few different levels. All right, next, the GPS. There is only one setting here, which is auto sync, and I don't know what it does. Uh, and also this ad unit supports both uh, Russian and uh, American navigation satellites, and they work all over the globe. In case you had, haven't known that Russian satellites are flying all over the globe, and you can actually use it from any place on Earth, not only Russia, and same thing for US satellites, they also cover all of Russia. And don't be paranoid that either Russian or US satellites 
are going to spy on your data if you live in in us or if you live in, in russia the navigation systems don't work that way it's a one-way transmission and the transmission all it contains is the time it just transmits the time and the the location is calculated by the time delay from the different satellites by the time they reach your head unit. I would be more worried about Alexa spying on me from home than GPS satellites spying on where I'm driving. All right, and this is probably where most of the bad English is. However, there's more. So press any key to start. I don't know what that means. <laughs> Break wire for video in motion. This enables you to watch videos while you're driving the car or watching animes uh, while your car is not in park. By default, this is the settings I selected to. If you turn this on, that means you can only watch videos when the car is in park. Auto start navigation, I think it starts maps as soon as you start the car. Uh, SDT time, I don't know <laughs> what that is either. And I don't know if you noticed, but the time on my screen is always wrong. Well, not always wrong. It's wrong until I'm um, driving outside when I get the GPS signal. That's when the time is updated. But upon boot up, my time is wrong. Uh, mute audio from reversing. Uh, yeah, this might be actually translated quite well. So, and self-explanatory. Also, mirror view, reverse image. So if you want your camera, reverse camera to be reversed, mirrored, you can switch as well. Backlight control. Oh, okay. Time control and so. Uh, by default, this is a setting and this is uh, controlled by your headlights. So, when I turn on headlights, the screen turns on to the night mode. Otherwise, you can have it time controlled. So, when the screen thinks it's time to be dark, it will be dark automatically, even if you don't have your headlights on. Okay, next, default volume switch. This is actually not a bad uh, feature in case you were driving to your workplace and you just like cranked your music all the way up uh, and you were just like jamming out and then you jumped out of your car last minute because you're late for work and you just like ran inside and then you decided to go out for drinks with your coworkers and you all get in your car and you turn on your car and then it just starts playing the last song you were playing on your head unit on the loudest volume and you just like embarrassed to bits with your poor choice of music and your co-workers hate you and they embarrassed being in the car with you and they just you get fired uh, to prevent that you can have a default volume switch and default volume switch is here default volume <laughs> so the switch for that is up there the volume you select is here and that means anytime you turn on the car it will reset your volume to this level. Uh, GPS mix is uh, probably would uh, turn off either GLONASS GPS or the US GPS from uh, being able to use at the same time. But I can't tell what GPS mix actually means. I just it was on by default and I leave it on by default. Uh, next is lantern settings. As far as I can tell, it does nothing. Uh, I tried to change these colors. Uh, f at first, I thought maybe the lantern settings would change the backlight on my keys here, but they don't. Maybe they do on some other units that have same operating system, uh, but in my case, they don't do anything. Uh, sound mix scaling. Um, don't know or don't remember what they do either. Uh, reverse uh, sound reduction when reversing is self-explanatory. You can reduce the volume of the sound if once you, when your car is in reverse gear. Steering wheel setting. So this will enable you to uh, match up uh, buttons on your screen. Not on your screen. This will enable you to match up buttons on your steering wheel to some of the functions on the screen. But as you can see, I don't have any extra buttons on my steering wheel that I can program to the screen. So I don't know how well this feature works, but there is if you can try it. And this is, changes your default navigation app, which I selected as Google Maps, and that works pretty good for me. And map data copy. 
I've tried to use this feature and I failed. I might be, this might be the button to copy the data onto the device if you have downloaded the maps onto USB stick and you want to copy them to the device. I don't think you can copy the data other way around. All right, and next you have this uh, icon right here. And when you press it, you are greeted with the password screen. And the head unit does not come with the instructions on how to get past this screen. So the pin requires only four digits. And from what I can tell, you do get unlimited attempts. Um, so you can try any number you like. However, there's one number I would not recommend you try. That is 1989. You see, there is uh, this thing about Chinese government and a number 1989 with the letters TS. On 1989, Taylor Swift was born. And Chinese government just really hates Taylor Swift. So do not Google 1989 TS and do not put a 1989 TS into this head unit or 1989 into anything or even Taylor Swift music and just forget that Taylor Swift even ever existed while using this head unit unless you want to feel the wrath Chinese Communist Party on you. So what is the correct password and what is behind this password protected screen? Well, the password is 3368 of course it's obvious isn't it how did i know this password if it's not obvious well i googled it uh, if you get a, one of these uh, head units and you're not sure what the password is uh, you can just keep googling it um, people tried all bunch of combinations and there are usually shared between different uh, systems so just keep trying all of them except that one number that should not be mentioned together again so Original car agreement. All right, external temperature. I'm not sure what it does. As you can see, I do have external temperature right there. Uh, it doesn't always work great, uh, and I'm not sure what this switch does. Automatic start stop. Also not sure what it does. Radar display on off. Also not sure what it does. Reverse parking lanes. Well, that is uh, turning off the reverse parking light lanes. So I do want them turned on. Uh, static trace, uh, not sure what it does. Maybe that's for the radio feature uh, where it's uh, finding your advertisement stations. Uh, reverse track and reversing track reversal. Uh, seems like a double negative of something. Uh, maybe it flips my lines upside down, uh, but not noticeable. Uh, can box upgrade, not sure what it does. I think you need to do some kind of upgrading. Uh, AC information on off. Uh, well, that is uh, for this uh, thing that sh shows up here. Anytime you do something to AC, uh, this uh, thing extends on the bottom to show you your fan selection, your temperature and stuff like that. If you turn that off, you can mess with AC and, I mean, your climate control and nothing will pop up. I do like this thing to be popping up so I can see what my fan speed is set to and where my uh, direction of the climb control is blowing to without actually opening up the whole app. Door on off, that will tell you that the door is open. When you open a door, it does this. Uh, if you turn this off, it's not gonna show a picture of a different car on my screen and tell me that somebody's door is open. Rear door exchange, <laughs> also not sure what it is. I don't even have rear doors. Um, then um, car audio type aux not sure what it does either i don't haven't tried messing with aux so much uh previous next reversal previous next so that is for this knob right here have that uh, that order to be reversed uh same thing you can reverse the order in which way the volume knob works if you don't like the normal way uh protocol print will just print some numbers over there i think that might be um your uh mac address uh, so it's more like a, ooh, it's printing something more. So probably like a debug feature, which I don't need. Uh, driver door position on the left side and a temperature unit uh, switch. So 
you might be able to have this temperature shown in Fahrenheit, but as you can see, even when I do the switch for this, nothing changes. <laughs> so maybe this feature doesn't work. Car model. So this is uh, for your CAN bus, from what I can tell. Uh, oh, hopefully I don't mess it up. The CAN bus system for this car, I guess, is identical to Ford Explorer, and that's what you have selected here. If you try selecting other cars, it's probably gonna mess with things that are on the CAN bus and probably not gonna work well. So I don't think you need to mess with this unless you are installing this into something other than the car that is meant to be installed in. And uh, antenna normally on, uh, also not sure what it does. And this is reversing video camera format. So by default, it's actually selected this, I think. And if you install a HD camera, and you don't turn this on, you're not gonna get full quality. Let's see here. It's probably not gonna be easy to notice. But the first time I have enabled AHD, there was visible notice difference in quality. Boot screen. So, oh, actually, I should change it to Ford. So this is basically the logo that is gonna show up when you start up your head unit. It was Ford, but it was reset to Android as my unit has rebooted and uh, cleared its memory a few times. And set screen. Not sure what that does. Uh, screen calibration, that's for your touch screen calibration. Uh, key panel learning, I think that might be for the steering wheel again. Uh, but as I've mentioned, I don't have any extra keys in my steering wheel to learn. So that is uh, the way it is. Okay, sleep mode setting. Now, this is kind of important. By default, the sleep mode setting is off, so, or on. So that means anytime when you turn the key off, the unit does not actually turn off. It will just go to sleep. So when you, next time you plug in the key and turn it on, it just wakes up and it's right there and ready to be used. And you might think this is wonderful and really fast. I mean, that's a lot faster than having the unit reboot itself. Uh, however, I've noticed a few glitches with my unit, like uh, unit just freezing up, rebooting itself, and at least a few times or three times, the unit did factory reset. It uninstalled all of the apps, cleared everything, and uh, messed all the settings up and went back to default. And uh, since then, I've turned off the sleep mode. So anytime when I turn off the key, the unit just shuts off. And every time I turn on the car, the unit has to reboot itself. And since then, I have not had this problem. I might change something in the future. I might try the sleep mode again. Of course, sleep mode is a lot faster uh, than rebooting every time. But if you're having difficulties with the unit crashing and unstable and just factory resetting all the time, maybe try turning off the sleep mode. Front view. I think this is if you have two cameras connected for your reverse camera and a front view. And when you're switching off from reverse gear into not reverse gear, it will show your front camera here, but I don't have that. And uh, I think this is also something related to that. Uh, um, uh, can, yeah, so not sure what MCU panel key is. Uh, unknown source. Oh, God. Okay, I think this allows you to uh, install apps from uh, unknown sources like hacked apps. Door interface. Um, yeah, not sure what it does. And over here, this is actually cho choosing different launchers. There is another launcher preloaded on the screen. And once you do a factor reset, it will load a different launcher. And the other launcher is a little bit more worse looking than this one, in my opinion. Uh, so to be able to get to that launcher, you will need to get into the screen and put in your password in all the places where it requires to put in this password. And then from here, you will be able to change the launcher. Originally, if you just get into the screen, if you didn't put in those numbers, you will not have this feature to change the launcher. At least I that's that's what happened to me. USB error detection, I don't know. USB protocol settings, you only have two options, one or two. Uh, I just leave it at two. 
uh, this unit does not have USB 3.0. Key to export. Not sure what just happened. Okay, use third party apps. So this is actually app for your reverse camera. I didn't mess around much with that other uh, reverse camera view uh, as it didn't get the reverse uh, parking lines. Uh, that's uh, kind of essential for me. All right, activation application not installed. So not sure what it does. DVD update. Uh, yeah, maybe that's something you get if you had a DVD player, but uh, this thing didn't come with a DVD player. Uh, so again, not sure what it does. TV type, I think this might be useful if you are uh, somewhere in a country that has uh, TV, like Japan. I think they have analog TV that you can actually pick up in your car. Uh, and maybe you need some app for that. Anyway, I, I think it does nothing. And video output source. I think this outputs video over the USB. Uh, I don't have anything plugged in right now. So what? No, don't know what it does. OBD, also don't know what it does. 360 switch. Also don't know what it does. And you might be thinking, gee, there's a whole lot of things. I don't know what it, they do on this uh, thing. And uh, yeah, that's, that's how it is. And I have tried to ask uh, on AliExpress to the supplier if they can send me a manual I said like you know if there's a manual even if it doesn't have even if it's not English if it has just pictures or something maybe I'll be able to figure out something and ask them to please me send me something and they did they did send me something except it's completely different from what you get here so um, I'm happy that at least they tried but uh, I wasn't able to get any documentations on the, what these features do all right next as far as I can tell, these are just basic Google map settings. So there's not so much uh, interesting stuff here. Uh, this application settings is to choose which apps you would like to be put it on default up on st startup. So if you want, for example, uh, Google Maps to be booted up as soon as you start the unit, it will boot up uh, Google Maps every time the unit is restarted. That's what you do. I have everything turned off by default and that's fine. Again, uh, I think these are just standard Google stuff here. You can uh, change your time, accessibility stuff uh, about the device. It's going to tell you the processor it has and uh, stuff like that. I'm not sure how uh, accurate that is, uh, but that's what it's written there for the processor. So who knows what is actually in there, uh, but that's what they claim to be. I have not tried to install any software to double check the performance of the processor, but from my experience, it works pretty good. So it has a eight core processor with four gigabytes of RAM and 64 gigabytes of storage. And then there's also develop operations. And again, it's password protected. Fortunately, the password is the same. And uh, from here, there's more uh, more standard Google Android stuff that you can change um, to mess around with. I have uh, don't think there is uh, much things to mess around with here, uh, but uh, uh, yeah, if uh, you're into this kind of stuff, you can change it here. Oh, actually, one, there's one thing I did change here is the ascent color. So as you can see, the ascent color is this ocean color. All right, and that's uh, pretty much it for the settings. Um, not sure if I showed this before, uh, but if you swipe down on the top here, this is pretty much, I think, standard on the Android, you get uh, more features here where you can turn on your uh, Wi-Fi to connect your cell phone, you can turn off the screen, you can do airplane mode when you once you're traveling on the airplane in your car, things like that, uh, and take screenshots and change screen brightness, uh, which I think is uh, pretty cool. Um, and you get the wrong time here. I think if you are, if you enable for the unit to not reboot every time you turn off the car, it will actually remember the time as it goes to sleep. But if you don't let your unit sleep, if you let, if you tell unit to restart every time, it will forget the time every time. Uh, it will remember the time as soon as I get GPS connection. But I'm on the ground and it's not going to be able to get GPS connection. That's just how life is. Well, if you stuck around to this point of the video, I mean, that's very impressive. I've 
taken so much time to it took so much time to record all of this i don't even know how long the whole video is going to be i hope i don't have to break it up in two parts uh, but uh thanks thanks for sticking around for the long haul and uh Overall, recommend the unit and see you in the next video.